Welcome to the root of all success with the real Jason Duncan, a podcast that explores how the world's most powerful entrepreneurs unlocked success and how their stories can help you do the same. A successful educator turned entrepreneur, Jason has built multi million dollar businesses that have been featured in Inc. Magazine and Entrepreneur Magazine. His life's mission now is helping entrepreneurs live what he calls hashtag the exit lifestyle. Introducing TEDx speaker, mastermind leader, author, entrepreneur, cigar aficionado, motorcycle enthusiast, and host of the root of all success, the real Jason Duncan. The real real Jason Jason Duncan. Duncan. Well, welcome back to another episode. I'm the real Jason Duncan. I, I'm going to be talking to Eric Estevez today. You can look him up at ericestevezthelender.com or you can look him up on Instagram at the Eric Estevez. Um, so he is, I guess, first generation uh, American. His family's from the Dominican Republic. His dad moved over here when he's 18 years old and was a hustler and figured out how to succeed in the in the business. Eric took the route, as we're going to talk about in the show, of going the corporate route, got a degree from the University of Miami Miami in international finance and marketing, went to work for some Fortune 50 companies that you probably shop at, Target, Walmart, some of these big guys, right? He's working for them and uh, began dabbling in, in entrepreneurship, wrote a children's book. We're going to talk about how he came up with the idea to write a children's book with his wife and then then started flipping phone apps, mobile apps, and then he started flipping houses, started investing. And from the first time he put 25 grand, which I, I find out in the show today, but but he put 25 grand into a, a, a passive investment to let somebody else do the sweat equity while he was still a W-2 employee. From that point, about a year later, he said, I'm done with this corporate life. I'm done with W-2 life. I'm going to go do my own thing. And uh, <laughs> he did one thing he shouldn't have done. And I'm not going to tell you what that is, but you'll find out in the show today. But Eric's a great, great guy. I mean, he's got a mortgage company that does over a hundred million dollars a year in revenue. Listen, how many people do you talk to? Do you know that are nine figure people? Well, you're about to meet one in Eric Estevez. This has led him to become to enter that top one percent of income earners in the United States. And he's also, which we didn't even talk about in the show today, and, and I wish we had gotten into a little bit, but a VA outsourcing company. But one of the passions of his life is helping his daughter get into the music business. And he's going to talk about that. And you'll see it. He, he gets a little choked up about it. But uh, Angelise Mariah is who she is. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, too. But I want you to welcome uh, my new friend, Eric Estevez, to the root of all success. Welcome to the show, my man. Uh, thanks for having me, Jason. It's a pleasure. Hey, it's, it's, it's such a weird world, man, doing, doing interviews on podcasts. Cause I sometimes I remember how I met people. Other times I'm like, dude, I have no idea how I met this cool person. <laughs> so how did how did we meet? How did this introduction happen originally? Do you remember how, how we got introduced to each other? Well, well I know we got in, into, introduced to Rebecca from Command Your Brand, but I sent you a message uh, on Instagram uh, when, when I first heard about your podcast and introduced myself uh, through Instagram, and, and we've been following each other now. For a little while, that led up. That's leading up to to our conversation today. So I love Instagram. I was talking to somebody. Uh, I, I spoke at a conference this past weekend in Florida, and I was talking to somebody there about about doing business with some something. Something happened, and we were talking, and and, and I traced back in my mind that business deal started on Instagram. I met somebody on Instagram, and then. We ended up connecting, doing. I don't know if we did a show together, but but ended up doing business together. It's fan, social media, dude. If you use it right, it is a powerful tool. But unfortunately, a lot of people use it wrong. <laughs> use it wrong. I think I think you know there's fundamentals in any business, but I think social media can give you a much deeper reach, much faster than ever before. So I agree. So tell me and tell the listeners uh, how you got started as an entrepreneur, because I know you had the corporate career, which I mentioned in the intro, and then you got into entrepreneurship. Tell, tell me how you got into that. Yeah, you know what? That's always been in my blood, Jason. Right? I've always wanted to be a business owner, um, you know, and, and, and I, I, I remember interning in Wall Street uh, for a summer and, and I, I just really wanted I knew that I, I didn't want to work for 
for uh, for someone for my for for the rest of my life. Now life happens and it punches you in the gut sometimes, right? And and you know, at 21 years old, I was graduating from the University of Miami, and my wife of 21 years was pregnant with my first daughter, right? So reality hit me quickly, and I don't think I had the uh, you know um, courage at the time to go out and and try to see what I can do for myself because I had two other people that I had to. Uh, fend for right, so um, I I just worked my way up the corporate ladder, uh, but when I got myself into a, a better financial position and, and started getting awarded stock options and RSUs, um, that's when I started you know that you know dipping my toe in the, the pond of entrepreneurship. So what was the first thing you did what, as an entrepreneur? Like okay, I've been working for these Fortune fifty companies, but I'm going to do my own thing. What was that first thing? I, I wrote we my wife and I wrote a children's book right about our dog our dog Chacho, right and my wife has always been saying I want to write a book I want to I want to start a children's book series, and we said you know what why not you know and and we did research and and we went ahead and we got self published and we we published our book um, you know Chacho passed away last year after fifteen years, um, really kind of inspired or sparked our journey into the entrepreneurial world. Right. And it's, and it came, and it was a passion project and it was really cool because my whole entire family was involved. My kids were involved. We talked about stories of, uh, of Chacho, right. And what, what we wanted to share with the world. And, and, and it was cool because our first, our first step into the entrepreneurial world was a passion project and it really felt great. And that just, you know, it, it's the rest is history. So Chacho is unfortunately gone on to doggy heaven. Uh, what kind of dog was Chacho? Oh, Chacho was a was a miniature poodle. Yeah. So uh, you know, and and since then we have two dogs um, after Chacho, and and we're continuing. We have the second book written, and our goal is you know almost to use this book as a, a family reunion of sorts. As as our kids get older, right? We want to meet and we want to write the next book together, and and it's something that we feel we can share with the world. So whose idea was it to write the book? Was it was it your wife's idea? Or was it your idea? It was 100 percent my wife. I have to give her credit, you know, she because she she was a stay at home mom. Right. And, you know, she was a soccer mom, you know, for our kids. And she, you know, Chacha was her companion while the kids were were going to school. Right. And she really had a deep connection with Chacho. And, and you know, and he and he was, you know, he was there for my, my daughter's third birthday and he was there when my son was born. Um, so she just wanted to share some of those moments. And, and we felt like, hey, maybe we do something like a Clifford the Red Dog, right? The big red dog. But maybe, you know, we, Chacho's is, is, is a Spanish Spanish name, right? Or, or, a, or a nickname, so you will, um, to connect with maybe uh, the Hispanic generation. And, and that was that was that was a spark of it. And uh, and things were put on pause for a little bit because we started doing a lot of other things and our lifestyles changed and whatnot. Right. Um, but we're ready to write the next book and, and publish the next book and, and continue writing. So how long did it take you guys to get the manuscript put together for the book? You know, what? I think it took a couple of weeks. You know, we we I remember, you know, sitting around in our living room and, and talking about some of the stories and how, how, how are we going to start? And we started storyboarding and what's the second book going to be and what's the third book going to be? And when do we introduce our second dog into the picture? Um, so it took about two weeks. And then, you know, we got an editor. I, you know, I, I started doing my own research and, you know, uh, um, it was it wasn't terribly expensive, but it wasn't. Um, you know, it was something that we can say, you know what, let's go ahead and start start doing this, even if we don't make our money back. Right. This is a passion project. It just makes us it just make, makes us feel good. And quite honestly, you know, Jason, like we we we, we basically broke even with, with this with publishing this uh, this book. Uh, but I, I think we're going to do this more for ourselves and to 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 make money from it. Right. So you're running a hundred million dollar company today. <laughs> <laughs> but you were doing, but you were doing this self-published book out of your living room. Uh, yeah. I, I, listen, there's a lot of people out there that listen to this, and they they're thinking about doing something like this. Let's yeah. let's give them some facts. How much does it cost? How much does it cost to print, you know, like to do the book project? I know you self-publish. How much does it cost? It was a few thousand dollars. I think it was you know between three to five thousand dollars. You know, by, by, and I think the most expensive part was was getting an illustrator for the book. 
and we and we went ahead and we found an illustrator on Upwork, right? Um, which which I use those freelancing um, uh, websites for my own business today. Um, you know, and then we went ahead and we, 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 instead of going with, I know a lot of people can go with Amazon right now. We went with Outskirts Publishing, um, and we signed a deal with them and, and then it was just really print on demand, right? So we, we didn't have boxes and boxes of books in our garage, right? Sitting, you know, with technology today, you have your own store and as they order it, they print them, right? Um, obviously the margins are a little less, but you don't have to worry about having all this inventory. So you basically, you know, sell as you go. Um, you know, and again, our job was just to kind of build a foundation and build the infrastructure and learn. Um, and then we started selling the books. And the great thing about that as well was that we were able to use that. And that year that we published the book was so memorable because, you know, when we when we started posting that we were now, you know, children's book authors, uh, we were speak we were reading the, the, the book to children right across the New Jersey, which is where we're from going to libraries, right? Um, you know, uh, Read Across America was, it was, it was always a big day for us where we go and get invited to schools. Um, and it's something that's still near and dear to our heart. So it's three to five grand, a few weeks of, of kind of thinking through it. You get a book published. You said you broke even. So, you you know, you sold enough books to get make your three to five grand back. But the goodwill that is provided and the the appetite, I think that, that whetted your appetite for Hey man, we can go do something big here. So is so you got other books coming on the on the children's book stuff with Chaco and and and, and friends, right? We do, yeah, we do have uh, we have an idea of a series, right? We even said, hey, maybe down the road we could even make this into a cartoon or, or whatnot. But but more so than that, you 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 said it yourself. It really whetted our appetite for doing things that we love, right? And do and and working for ourselves. And and we we live in the information age where we can figure this out. You know, and um, and and that led to, you know, flipping mobile apps, right, where I would just buy skins of, of, of phone apps, hire a developer. It's almost like flipping a house at a much lower scale, right, because it's only this is thousands of dollars versus hundreds of thousands of dollars. Right. And then that led to right uh, uh, me getting into real estate investing and 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 learning how to flip homes and flipping homes of my own, and then that's what kind of led me to be a, a business owner uh, today. Um, and it leads into right. So I manage my daughter's music career, right? So the cool thing is, is that right we we're raising our children to really follow your passion, do what you love, the money will come. Follow your passion. Do what you love. The money will come. But what if I love something that ain't going to make any money? I'm a firm believer, Jason, that if you love something, right, and you spend enough hours in it, right, it takes 10,000 hours to become a master at anything, right? And if you spend that time, the money in, in, the, in the beginning is not going to come. But if you your passion is unwavering, right, um, you're going to continue to separate yourselves from other people that are doing the same things. And, in, you know, and, you know, we have to be realistic. The money may not come right away, but um, after years of building a business, right, if you're passionate about something, you're going to continue to be good at it. I think the money's going to come. Right. Um, and a lot of people start doing this as a side hustle and then a side hustle replaces their main hustle. Right. And that's OK, because we understand that you have to pay bills. Right. But but follow follow your passions is, is, is something that, you know, my wife, my, my, my daughter, rather, was on a podcast earlier uh, with that that just that was just released. And she was talking about she's 19 years old and she's talking to these to these young to these young girls who said, if you want to sing, if you want to be an entertainer, go for it. Do it right. Um, there's so many outlets out there. As long as you have supportive people around you, then you can achieve your goals. So so you came out of college um, right out of college, University of Miami. You had the degree, but you also had a wife and a baby on the way. And you, you decided to take what a lot of people would consider the safe route, which is go to the corporate world. Uh, I disagree that that's the safe route. And I think now you probably would, too, because, you know, you're not in control of your own destiny when you're an employee. You're, you, they, they are in control of your destiny. But but nevertheless, you took what was considered at that moment. The, the conventional wisdom tells the safe route and you and you build a pretty successful career there. Then you start writing books, right, with, the, you know, the kids books. Where did the app flipping come? Because that, that's an interesting little thing. And you, you equated it to like house flipping, obviously different scale. How in the world did that happen? Like, how'd you find out about that? Uh, just researching, you know, what kinds, what, what kinds of things I can get into, um, you know, and what was, what, what, what was, was popular at that time, right? You know, so this was, you know, maybe seven, eight years ago. 
Um, and, and I know that, you know, apps were a big thing, right? And, um, you know, I wasn't a developer. I didn't know how to code, right? Um, but, but then I read about, you know, these sites where you, you have these, you know, skins of these apps, the bones of the apps that are already made, right? So some of that coding that's already made. And it's just a matter of now, right, for a fraction of the cost, really using that and building that and 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 try to get more users and try to sell them right and it's like building a little mini business and it's again relatively low cost it was it was a few thousand dollars similar to writing the book that that we were able to do that with with several apps and um and then once i started kind of getting you know um i could say wow we can build businesses right on a smaller scale and now we started taking it from the lower thousands of dollars to now flipping houses and hundreds of thousands of dollars and um you know and and now right trying to do some bigger things even with the music career and whatnot so you know we started small with some of these businesses right um and not all of them were huge successes but you never lose right when you when you keep on moving forward you never lose when you keep moving forward that's good i i, I like that so you're flipping apps um and then you got into real estate so you go from corporate career to children's book, flipping apps, then real estate. Were you still a W-2 employee uh, throughout this whole process? I was still a W-2 employee. I was still putting in 50, 60 hours a week, right? Um, at, at these uh, large retailers. And, you know, fortunate that I, I've, I've, I grew to be a, a good leader um, in these companies. So I was a valuable asset, um, you know, but I, I, I didn't control my time. I, I think I was able to develop a team, right, where I, I was able to, tr I was working towards a decent work-life balance, but, you know, I had to work Thanksgivings, right? I had to work, you know, Christmases, Christmas Eve, right, and, and weekends, and, and, and um, you know, I had to miss some of my kids' football games or, you know, um, baseball games or basketball games where they're involved in every sport, um, you know, and, and I became a Grinch during the holiday season, right? That's what <laughs> So, and my and my family loves Christmas, and I became a Grinch, and and I remember, um, you know, investing passively. I had I got a mentor that was flipping a lot of houses, and I said I want to learn. I invested some money with him, but uh, and got a ready return. But it, but more so than that, I was in education, so I was almost paying for a college education, which actually, you know, I, I got a nice return uh, uh, back from my initial investment. Did that several times before I started flipping my own property, right? Um, and then at that time. When I was doing a flip and it was a big out of level on a property, um, you know, I remember going to my job and I was like a zombie because I was just thinking about all these other cool things that was happening outside of that nine to five. Right. So you will W2 world. Um, and I actually, you know, I, I remember my boss came in one time and I, I told her, I said, Debbie, I don't think I can do this anymore. Um, you know, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> I'm breaking up, right? How much more time do you need? And, you know, I gave her a 45-day notice so they can go ahead and, and find a replacement for, for, for me. And I was able to spend some time with them to kind of take over uh, the reins. Uh, and I left, I left in good standing. I can go back tomorrow if I want to, right? Um, but I remember leaving and I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know that I was going to venture into the lending world. Um, you know, um, I thought I was going to flip houses, Right for the rest of, of my life, but I realized that that it's not as easy as you see in these you know seminars or on TV, right? Um, so I knew I had to get another revenue uh, source, and and hence why I became a lender. So flip, so you're flipping houses passively while while you're still a corporate employee, Correct. and you you done the you done the book already, you done the apps, and and now you're flipping houses passively. Um, how much, if you don't mind, how, how much money were you investing passively to flip? Cause I mean, if somebody else was doing it, I mean, I, I would imagine you're the investor. There's a, there's a sweat equity guy. Like how much money were you investing to give people a sense of you can start making a break from your corporate career if you can do this? Yeah. Great question. You know, you, we started with the book and apps with, with thousands of, you know, 3000 $5,000. My first passive uh, investment in real estate was twenty five thousand dollars, and this was a an R, a restricted stock unit that vested, right? And and because I was getting awarded as a as a top performer in in, in these companies, and I remember taking that twenty five thousand dollars and I gave it to a friend of mine who be, who was flipping these houses, and he gave me a fifteen percent rate of return within six months, right? Of, of that twenty five thousand um, dollars, which is a healthy uh, re return on investment, but more so than that, Jason. 
um, I, it was a knowledge. I was learning about hard money. I was learning about contracting. I was learning about right, you know, these L, L, LTVs, right, loan to value ratios, and 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 all these terms and after repair values, ARVs. And that education to me was 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 paramount, right? Um, and I did that several times. Each time increasing my investment um, until I took on my own project. And now we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? Um, you know, and it wasn't myself. This was a big project. So I brought in some investors of my own and, and you know, we spent $250,000 um, renovating a, a particular property in a beautiful neighborhood. Um, so that was a larger scale thing, right? But we started small and, and we ended up pretty big. So <clears throat> started 25K on a, on a kind of a, a passive. Yep. From, from the time you did that, until you said as Debbie, your it was your boss, is that what you said? Yeah, From yeah, yeah. that day you invested the twenty five to the conversation you have with Debbie, I'm out. Like <laughs> how long how long was how long of a time period was that? It's about a, it's about a year, you know. I, you know. I reinvested passively, you know, several times to several properties. Um, you know, so it was about a year that it took me to to the you know, the big flip. Um and I was just I was I had an, I had a there was an, an excitement within me, right? I was nervous, right? That's what I was thinking about when I was there. I didn't think I was giving my team 100% of me because my mind was elsewhere and I don't think it was fair. And it wasn't fair to me, right? It, I, I wanted to, 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 to spend time where I felt those butterflies in my stomach, right? So about a year, so 25K, you flip two or three passively and you have the conversation with Debbie, like I'm out. So day one of your first day not being an employee, how'd that feel? Uh, well, after my wife yelled at me uh, <laughs> <laughs> because because I, I, this is a, this is something I, I I failed to miss. I made a decision that I did not consult that with my wife. Right, Ooh. I had a conversation and I came home and and, and I told my wife. Yeah, I got 45 days, you know, and, um, you know, and, and you know, I, I luckily I had to build a, a, four, a nice 401k and I was able to cash out. You know, I learned I learned about, you know, paying the t those taxes the hard way. Right. But but that's what helped us survive as I built the business um, where, you know, you basically eat what you kill. Right. So you will. Um, but that first day, um, the first couple of months was very exciting. Right. Because, you know, we had we had money saved up. Right. Um, we 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 said, OK, you know, um, the things are going well is, is obviously as the project started taking longer. Oh, my God, my rate of return, the, 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 my, my my length of, of return and my investment for this flip is taking longer. Right. You start getting a, a little bit more nervous. Right. Especially now when your savings are dwindling. And I would say that I went through my entire you know savings. Right. While I was doing this flip and then figuring out what to do next. Um, and, and you know what, I'm grateful for that because it's almost like we lost all of our savings, everything that I've worked for, for 14 years. But if I didn't have that, Jason, I wouldn't have been as hungry as I was, you know, um, in building this business. I mean, I was out there and, and, you know, I, I'm a 5 a.m. -er, um, you know, and I would, I would go to my office when we opened up an office and I would get home at, you know, 10 o'clock at night. Um, and I was working more hours than when I was working in retail, but I was working for myself, right? Um, and, and I can tell you, right, that the first year was really hard. Second year was a little easier. Right. But by the third year, I've earned more money than I've earned in the, in the, in the, in the first 14 years in my career. And I was working for myself. Let's take a quick break to thank our amazing sponsors for making this podcast possible. As an entrepreneur, I know that you have to deal with sales on a regular basis. I mean, every entrepreneur does. And if you aren't paying attention to sales as an entrepreneur, you're not going to be an entrepreneur for very long. But I've got a sponsor of this show called Dub that helps you bring the personal back to sales. If you want to figure out how to improve content creation, improve client trust, improve your sales process, decrease the sales cycle, because we all know time kills deals. If you want to increase client bookings and increase conversions, you need to take a look at Dub. There's a special offer for Dub for listeners to the root of all success at therealjasonduncan.com slash Dub, and that's D-U-B-B. -B. I've been using this for years. I'm a huge fan, and I'm so honored that they're our primary sponsor of the podcast. They have helped over 60,000 businesses around the world communicate better to make sales 
easier, to make sales more personal. Dub is built for growing teams. I mean, you can set up video emails, you can set up custom onboarding, you can do admin reporting, anything you need around video and sales and automation, Dub is there. You can try Dub now. Your conversions to sales are waiting. All you got to do is go to therealjasonduncan.com slash Dub. And there you're going to get two weeks for free to try Dub. Plus, you're going to get 50% off your first two months of Dub. You can't, you can't beat that. So go check it out. Go to therealjasonduncan.com slash Dub. 40 years ago, you weren't in business unless you had your business in the yellow pages. You remember those things? <laughs> and 30 years ago, you weren't in business unless you had a door to door salesman. 20 years ago, you weren't in business unless you had a website. And today, you're not in business unless you're doing social media content. Am I right? Social media content. Social media content in the form of like micro content, which is 30 to 60 second spots on Instagram Reels or TikTok or YouTube Shorts. That's the way business is done. As a matter of fact, that may be how you found out about this podcast or me as a business coach. This medium that we're using today to communicate what we do is vitally important. And just recording yourself isn't enough. You've got to do it right. And my friends over at Story do it right. And one of the problems with doing it wrong is that you sit around thinking, well, what the heck am I going to record? How, what am I going to say? How am I going to say it? Like, I don't, I don't know what to talk about. Well, story takes all of that away from you. Stop wasting time trying to come up with content because story will send you a video prompt on what to record. You can pick the categories you want to record in, whether it's real estate, entrepreneurship, finance, relationship, leadership, life insurance. It could be anything. Don't waste time on that. And by the way, if you're not confident in talking on video or if the video editing portion takes up way too much of your time, Story will edit the videos to perform well on social media. They add the subtitles, the pop-ups, the Zoom cuts. They remove all the filler words like uh and um and uh. They remove the awkward pauses. And then they take that video and post it for you. They write the captions, they add the relevant hashtags, and they post it on the platforms that you care about the most. It's exactly what you need to be in business today. And to be successful at it. So if you want to learn how to do social media the way the influencers do, you need to go to therealjasonduncan.com slash story. And that story with two Y's. Why? Because they're awesome. Go to therealjasonduncan.com slash story. That's S-T-O-R-Y-Y for 10% off your first three months to try story out. You're going to thank me later. Thanks for listening to our sponsors. Now back to the show. That, that's a sound clip right there, man. That, that's a sound bite, man. That is good stuff. So you, you took the leap and, and uh, didn't tell your wife. I would not recommend that. <laughs> would not recommend that. You got you to have your partner on board with this. So you didn't tell her. It was exciting, though. You, you made it through that first year. And, and were you just doing flips those first two or three years? Is that all you were doing? Well, no. So, so when I left, when I left, um, you know, my, my, my job, um, you know, uh, I, that summer I was, I was always, all I was doing is, is the flip, right. I was focused on that, you know, following up. I was almost like the, you know, I would show up to the house, make sure everything was going well. And we've had a lot, you know, I've learned a lot and we actually, we had a lot of failures in that big flip because this is a big, bigger flip. Um, and I, I just kind of, you know, took the summer off, you know, because we, we had we had some savings in, in there, right? But then when I realized, okay, this is taking longer than anticipated. Um, what's the next deal? Where's it coming from? We have to build the infrastructure. Um, I am fortunate that my father has been in the lending world for 25 years, but my father's been like a one man team, right? Never really built a team, worked on his own. Um, he was successful at it, right? But not at the levels that I wanted to take a business. And I remember speaking to him on a Thursday and I said, Pops, what do you think if we work together? If I get licensed and, you know, we, I, I use my skills to build a team and you just help me how to put a loan together. And this was a Thursday. And on Monday, I was taking my, my class. And then the following Wednesday, I took my test. Right. And I failed my first time. Right. With the 74 uh, to, to get your mortgage loan, mortgage loan original license, you have to have a 75 uh, score better. And I failed by one point. Mm -hmm. oh. and I, remember, I remember this was in August. And uh, and then I had to wait uh, 30 days in order for me to retake it. And I remember it was September 11th. 
um, and in September, and I passed my test, and um, and and the rest is history. I I it was myself and my father in a small little office, um, and he was just teaching me how to about loans and about terminology, and I was just building the. I was out there meeting with people, um, marketing myself, marketing the business, um, hiring people, right? And and you know then I then I joined forces with another gentleman that I met in our in our prior company. And it took us four years to go from zero to 100 million in revenue, right? So, you know, using my father's past experience and, and using that that experience to help leverage, right, that that learning curve um, or lessen that, the shortening that learning curve, rather, um, we were able to just build a team. And, and I always knew that we will never get to where we need to be without the right team. And that's what I was good at. Um, and we built it, right? And, and the team is, is, is an amazing team, um, allows us to continue to grow and bring more business into, into our pipeline. $100 million, man. There's not a lot of people that can say they built a business that does nine figures, man. How's that feel? It feels great. You know, it feels great. You know, I, I think, uh, uh, you know, last year it, it was a tough year for the mortgage industry and the real estate industry. So we all had a reduction. Right. But I think that our reduction still beat the reduction of, of the average across the industry. You know, I'm fortunate that, you know, um, I, they use me. You know, we work with um, where we own a branch of, of a national uh, company um, and, you know, they use me. I, I spoke right uh, last. I did one of these trainings of Zoom training where hundreds of one originators across the country. And they use me as an example and, and, and they help me that they, they use me to teach new loan originators, even older loan originators. Just to try to, you know, uh, implement some of the things that we're doing. Um, and it just feels good. It feels good to be able to take something that's been around for such a long time and put your own flavor into it. Right. Um, and, and help it grow. And it's exciting every single day to me that uh, I wake up and I'm excited for what I do. Man, that's uh, that's quite a story. That's quite a story. So you and your dad working together, you guys are killing it, building this huge empire on the on the lender side. But but you've also got a 19 year old daughter who's uh, in the music business that you're able to work with. So you've got you're working with a generation before you and a generation after you. So tell me a little bit about what it's like working with your daughter on her music career. Oh man. Um, I get talked up. Yeah. It's, it's great because, you know, my, my father came to this country, you know, from the Dominican Republic when he's 18 and he hustled, man, you know, they, my, my parents hustled to give us a better life and, and give us a good education. And we went, you know, and our job is to go to school, get educated, go get good jobs. Right. Um, but I think that now um, I'm able to teach my kids um, to, to really, you know, follow their dreams. Right. And, and I think, you know, school's important and education is important, but it really is about following your dream. And my daughter, since, for since such a young age, she knew she wanted to be an entertainer. Right. And I remember I used to go to. Um, daddy daughter dates were her right um, every quarter and I remember you know posting videos of her singing in some you know local you know her school talent shows and someone mentioned a talent agency in New York and I remember this was 10 years ago um, and um, and I said hey daddy daughter date let's take a train into New York City let's go check this out and I remember she blew the the agent away and I remember the agent walked out after talking to my daughter she walked out and said hey I want to represent your daughter and all I said is I'm not paying anything right this is a scam right <laughs> and she goes and she says she goes no this isn't a scam you know she explained to me this you know they get 15 percent off of every job they book and 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 my daughter always wanted to entertain so I, I said I'm gonna push her for that and she's been signed to a talent agency since She's been doing television, commercials, print ad, right? She went to performing arts high school. And and this is the only thing that she's ever wanted to do. And I wish I had a passion like that, that my daughter had and, and, and knew had that clarity, right? Since being a child. And I think our job as parents, if we have a child that is clear about what they want to do, right? We want we want to support that because not that many people have that clarity. Um, and, and now, right? it's 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 on a bigger scale right now she started writing music and she started recording music she's on itunes and, Sp and spotify and all platforms and now we're going to be recording our first music video we were at a photo shoot last week so it's cool that i've been able to build a business that runs right i still i'm still the face of it but we have a team that can allow me to step away and build other businesses which right now the, the most exciting thing is my daughter's music career well you're you're speaking my language on a couple of levels. Number one, 
um, I'm, I'm a dad as well. And I love to see my kids succeed. I loved it. And my, my kids are 22 and 20. And I, I, so I'm, I'm proud of what you're experiencing. Cause I know what that feels like. I know, I know what that feels like as a dad. But the other thing is you, what you said there at the very end, I think is really, really key. And this is something I teach as a business coach all the time is that if you're the owner operator, of your business, man, if you're running it 50, 60, 70 hours a week, owner operator, you, you're, you're missing the point. The point of business ownership is to have the financial resources to do what you really want to do. To, and, and so now you've built a, a tremendously successful business with your dad and it allows you the opportunity to go spend time with your daughter to help her pursue her dreams. And if you, if you were grind hustling and grinding, like everybody tells you, you got to do in your business, dude, you wouldn't be spending time with your daughter, man. So you, you, you're given this gift to your daughter by stepping away from the daily operations of your business. And I applaud you, man. I, Eric, I think that's I think that's fantastic. That's better than a hundred million dollar revenue. I, what I you're doing, I agree. And, and you know, and it's great. My father works for me, but I didn't, my my mother works for us too. She's one of our assistants, right? Um, you know, my 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 wife uh, got her real estate license. She's also working with us. So it's like a fam, like it's like a family enterprise that we're building, right? So we're spending time together, um, quality time, right? We're not we don't just talk about work, obviously, but but we're always in communication and you know what to me you know that time is so important um and yeah you know what i'm learning about the music industry so right now i'm all about reading books about the music industry listening to podcasts my tiktok feed right now it's about it's real estate right and, and comedy and uh and 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 music industry right um because I, I i am on tiktok and and i i, I get goofy right but I, I get deals from tiktok too um because we educate but but i i'm 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 taking those things right the same things that i learned from the book uh, writing the book and and the and the mobile app flipping and the house flipping right and building a business and i'm able to i'm able to say okay well how fast can i get my daughter to where we need her to be because i have all these fundamentals i just need the know-how right i need to learn a little bit more i need the right connections and, 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 you know, hopefully um, by the end of this year, we get her signed to a major label. Man. So tell me, tell me your daughter's name, tell everybody so they can go look her up. Oh uh, yeah. So uh, she goes, her name is Angelise Angel YSE, Mariah, like Mariah Carey. That's her middle name. So Angelise Mariah, uh, you can find her on, on Instagram, on TikTok, right. On all on iTunes and, and Spotify. Um, she has a few singles out right now, but we have some music that we're going to start to release uh, along with some visuals. So we're happy for that. Man, congratulations, dude. So let me ask, <clears throat> let me ask you this. So this is the show is called the root of all success. So what do you think is the root of your success? Like what has led you to be so successful in real estate and mortgage and, and lending? And now, now with uh, everything else you got going on with your daughter. So that's an amazing question, you know, and, and I, I can, I can answer that in two parts. I, I think one, um, you know, I think the most successful people really truly analyze their failures, right? And they and they build from they, they they build from the wins that they've had. So, like I mentioned, you know, when you when you, when you look at Elon Musk and you look at right, you know, these billionaires that are out there, they failed so much more than the average person. They weren't afraid to fail, but also when they failed, they they said, okay, that didn't work, but these things did work. Let me take that and add it to my next business. And I think when you really dissect any business like that, right, um, I think that you can drive a successful business. And I'm able to now uh, create some different businesses in different industries, right, with those same fundamentals, right. But Success is not just business, right? Um, you know, I was listening to, um, you know, I was re-listening to Zig Ziglar's Born to Win the other day, and he was talking about how success is is a wheel, right? There's it's a there's a wheel with different spokes on it, um, and and you can put your own spokes on there, whether it's you know your career, your finances, your relationship with your with your with your significant other, right? Your relationship with your kids and your family, um, your health. And I think that success is when you're you're working on, on all those things, right? On all those spokes of of life, because quite honestly, Jason, you somebody can be of great financial success, but could be a horrible husband, right? Or could be a horrible father. 
And is that really successful, right? I think is when you have that balance and you look at that always and, uh, and say to yourself, okay, when you have a vision board or when you have um, goals, don't just focus on your career, right? Career is just one part of who you are, right? Um, focus on the rest. And for me, for example, I don't think I'm going to be, I don't think I'm successful un until my health has been the biggest, the, the, that spoke of the wheel that's been cracked, right? Um, and, and I know that now is now or never. I'm 41 years old. You know, I'm going to the gym. I'm eating better. I'm, I, I have to get healthy because for the last 20 years, I kind of let myself go. And luckily, I've built businesses to give me enough time, right, to go, to go and work on myself. So those are my definitions. I'm sorry it's a little long-winded. Well, so, uh, no, I, I said you said your key to success here is truly analyzing your failures and building from the wins. Genius. I think that's really, really good. How do you, if you had to define success, like in, in, in a phrase, what do you think success is? I think success is, is, is really being uh, happy in all the spokes of that wheel of life, right? Um, we, we And success is different to other people, but I define it like in mine is, if I'm a good son, husband, father, right? If I'm healthy, if if I if I'm if if I'm moving forward with my my career goals, if my financials are are getting better, for, especially from a passive uh, pr passive perspective, right? I'm getting passive income. To me, those are the spokes of wheel in life that if I if I work if I'm working on all those things, I'm happier, right? Um, and everybody might be a little different and everybody's, and that might shift within your lifetime. Right. Um, but that's what I'm working on today. I'm trying to work on all the spokes of those wheels to, to really, truly feel successful. So with that as a definition, being happy in all aspects of life, do you consider yourself to be a successful person? I, I am getting there. Right. Um, I think that I'm successful in many of those spokes of the wheel. Um, I, I just mentioned that the health, right. I just, I just came from a, I just came from physical earlier today. Cause I'm focused on my health. Like I'm, I'm five, nine, 255 pounds. I'm stocky. I play, I used to play football, but I'm, I'm, I'm overweight, Jason. Right. Um, and, and I'm, I'm getting featured on television. I wasn't, I do Spanish channel television every Sunday morning, um, to, to educate the community, uh, about mortgages. Uh, and I've been featured on, on the competitive, on the competitor at Univision several times already. So I'm doing more television. I'm doing more speaking engagements. I'm doing these podcasts. And I don't feel, I, I'm self-conscious about the way I look, right? So when it comes to that, I don't feel I'm successful yet, but, but now I know that the number one of my number one, I have two goals this year, right? Two, I kept, I, I kept it simple. I want to, I want to lose 40 pounds and I want to, I want to sign my daughter, right? Because if I'm helping my daughter with her career, I'm going to be, I'm going to be ecstatic. I don't care what else ha is happening with me. I I'm going to be over the moon. And if I get healthy, that's going to be uh, the last piece of the wheel that I felt that I've really neglected for all these years. So I really want to focus on those two things. Uh, uh, well, I appreciate the transparency, man. That's this is the kind of stuff that I think the listeners want to hear. They want to hear the fact that, dude, it's great to go build a hundred million dollar company. It's great to do all these cool stuff, but man, if you're screwed, if you're screwed up in your health or your family is all jacked up, you know, if something's out of whack, you can't enjoy those those things. It's not all about the money. Now, the money helps it, <laughs> it helps it helps you spend, uh, it helps you have better perspective. But but I'm really I appreciate that transparency and that vulnerability. Well, what, um, how can people get in touch with you? I, I know that there are people that are going to want to reach out because this is, a, this is a good story, very motivational. So how would, what's the best way for people to get in touch with Eric Estevez? Yeah. So, uh, we can reach out to me on Instagram, the Eric Estevez, E-R-I-C-E-S-T-E-V-E-Z. You can also go on my website, Eric Estevez, and reach out to me through there. Um, and yeah, I, I listen, I'm, I'm very responsive on social media, so, um, I'm here to help. Well, so on the on the lender, Eric Estevez, the lender dot com. Are you are you guys licensed in all 50 states in case anybody's interested in getting a mortgage? Yeah, great question. And thank you for putting that out. So um, my branch isn't we, we're like we're licensed in most states across the eastern seaboard. But Na Nations Lending as a whole is licensed in all 50 states. So I'll be able to refer you to the right people to help you. Yeah. So no matter where you are in the U.S., if you are in the need of a mortgage, Reach out to Eric Estevez, uh, the lender dot com. Eric Estevez, the lender. Look at him up on Instagram. Eric, uh, the Eric Estevez uh, on Instagram, the Eric Estevez. 
Eric, it's been a pleasure talking to you, man. I'm going to give you the last word. I like to give guests the last word. So if there's anything else you want to say before we sign off today, it's all yours. Uh, I just want to thank you, Jason, for having me. Um, you know, I think that uh, what you're doing, right, um, I, 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 I urge people to continue having conversations like we just had, even if it's not a podcast. Reach out to a mentor, someone that's already been successful, uh, achieve what you're trying to achieve. This is a year for you that should be a connection because when you have those people around you, you're going to see yourself being gravitated to their world. Um, so, you know, you know, and I know Jason that since you've had this podcast, I'm pretty sure you've grown exponentially because you've been able to meet so many different people, um, and learn from them. And, and I think that that's one of the greatest things. And this is what you do is, is very, a lot of, a lot of effort in what you do. Um, but even if you don't start a podcast, you know, for everyone else, go out there and connect, um, meet people, shoot messages, have a 15 minute conversation. And I guarantee you, you're going to grow. Love it. Thanks, Eric, for being on the show, man. I wish you the most success you'll ever experience this year because you're going to be 40 pounds down and your daughter is going to be a signed recording artist, man. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Well, there you have it. Another very successful entrepreneur on his story from corporate life to the ideal life, that the life of freedom of time. Eric Estevez, story is inspirational. And as a listener, I want you to really pay attention to the nuggets of information that he gave us, that he he put in his time in the corporate world. He dabbled in entrepreneurship until it became something, an obsession that he could not live without doing. But I think the coolest part about all that is that he was able to build a business, a successful business, without being there 50, 60, 70 hours a week that he built it where he could step away from the daily operations. Why? Not just to sip my ties on a beach somewhere, but so that he could invest time with his daughter and with his family. And, and his definition of success is about having, having that success across all aspects of life, all the spokes and the wheels, as he talked about it, referencing to Zig Ziglar and, and the wheel of success. And, and he, he even got transparent with us and showed us, the, the, the softer side of, of what success looks like. And that's, Hey man, I gotta be better at health. I gotta lose some weight. I gotta get better. And, and because of that, he doesn't yet consider himself to be the successful, successful person that he wants to be. But by all accounts from the outside, looking in, Eric's killing it. And uh, we're very proud of him and I'm happy to know him. And I want you to go look him up the Eric Estevez on Instagram or Eric Estevez, the lender.com. We'll tune in again next week when I talk with yet another very successful entrepreneur about his or her journey to success. Until then, I am the real Jason Duncan, and Jesus is King. Thank you for listening to another edition of The Root of All Success with the real Jason Duncan. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, visit therootofallsuccess.com to access the show notes and other helpful resources. Follow Jason on social media at The Real Jason Duncan. Are you an entrepreneur who feels trapped in the weeds of daily operations, not experiencing the freedom you thought you'd have as a business owner? Want to know the way out? Take Jason's free exit readiness assessment to see how close you are to getting ready to experience true freedom and success as an entrepreneur. Go to amireadytoexit.com today. That's amireadytoexit.com. See you again next time here on The Root of All Success.